The text for our discussion at the Olive Branch, three of us on Zoom this month, was the poem Dover Beach by the Victorian English poet Matthew Arnold, published in 1867. It's a fairly well-known poem in the English-speaking world, at least. I chose the poem because there's a phrase in the poem, the sea of faith, and the Sea of Faith is the phrase, the title, the name, uh, taken by a group of people who are theologically progressive, uh, highly influenced by the theologian Don Cupid, and perhaps also by Lloyd Gearing in New Zealand. So the Sea of Faith is a known movement often referred to, and I thought it would be a good idea to discuss not just the phrase, but the poem from which it's taken. Matthew Arnold, it is said, wrote the poem before the year of publication in 1867. He possibly wrote it on his honeymoon to Dover in England, uh, perhaps as early as 1851. But the poem is a depiction of the scene that he sees, which is of the sea and the tide going out and leaving the naked shingle on the beach, and he likens the tide receding uh, to the sea of faith, to Christian faith, receding in its influence uh, and its power throughout the 19th century. He says to his wife, lover, partner, to someone close to him who happens to be with him, uh, let us be true to each other. Uh, as if to say that while faith is receding, we may find in our love for each other the, the solace and the comfort and the normal life that any human person needs. Uh, all around him, he sees not just the, the sea of faith, but uh, armies, ignorant armies fighting, which reminded me of present violence in Ukraine, Gaza, and in many other places. So please read the poem, and uh, if you want to, and enjoy it as an expression of one poet's view of the decline of faith and the consequences of that, and as well as his own personal response uh, in the 19th century, but still influencing us today in the form of the phrase, the sea of faith, and the movement around that phrase.